This is the process we go through when producing a landing page for a client's website. Step number one is to establish some sort of site architecture for all of your landing pages. Let's say for argument's sake, you're a software company and you develop custom customer relationship management software for different types of industries. We would usually structure your website's landing pages in a way where you have a parent page for customer relationship management software, include on that page a section that talks about the different industries that you serve, and in there it would link down to a child page specifically for those industries. So customer relationship management software for auto dealers, customer relationship management software for home care agencies. Getting this internal linking and this structure right is gonna help each one of these child pages that we build to rank better, as well as that parent page. Because each one of those pages is going to link back up to the parent page through breadcrumbs. And in most cases, they're going to internally link to one another as well. Now, if you have a business that serves a geographic area, we'll often do service. And then the child page will be the different locations. In other words, home care agency Tampa with a child page that is home care agency St. Petersburg, home care agency Clearwater, or maybe even forward slash 24 hour care forward slash Clearwater. This is the first step before we even do one minute of keyword research. How are we going to internally link all of these pages we're going to create. Once that's established, then we need to move into finding the keywords that we want to target. The goal here is to identify how your customers look for the services that you provide. Commonly in SEO, this is trying to figure out if people are looking for caregivers, home care agencies, companion care, roofing companies versus roofers, and really just identifying the right keyword that we should set as the main one that we, that we want to rank for. Once we determine that, we then need to look at the search engine results. The first thing we want to see is what is performing well in the search results for whatever query we've decided to target. In this case, I'm looking at Senior Living Springfield, Missouri, and I can find that there are several directories in here, uh, but there still are some opportunities to get actual senior living communities ranking here. I picked this search because I've seen search engine results where 80% of the results are directories on page one, in which case it may be a waste of time for us to go after that query. Obviously, that's not the case here. So the next thing we want to see is what is on these pages. In particular, of the results here that do not have super high domain metrics, in other words, the ones that don't have the super strong backlink profiles, ones that seem to be maybe punching above their weight, what's going on with their on-page optimization that, that we can emulate? What I'm referring to is if I look at this DR number and this UR number, this is measuring the link equity that is linking that is flowing to each one of these pages. Google uses backlinks from other websites as an indication of the trustworthiness and the authoritativeness of that website. And you'll notice that there's often a strong correlation between this these numbers being higher and them ranking better. Now you'll notice that here we have this Terra Vera and we have this Springhouse Village, one with a domain rating of 49 and the other with a domain rating of eight. This is all on a logarithmic scale. So that is a significant difference between these two results. And the one with the lower score is actually outranking the one with the higher score. So what's going on there? We'll click on the results, open up the new tabs, take a look at what's going on there. What are the subtopics that each one of these is targeting? Honestly, I'm seeing that this is an outdated website that didn't real, doesn't really have much going on here. And when we go over to this one, this is kind of the same thing, which is one of the other reasons why I chose this specific query. Often we'll have a client that's competing in a market like Springfield, Missouri, that is Bush Leagues, let's say. And if we compare the content that we're producing to something that is doing well in a highly competitive market, let's say like Southern California or Central Florida, it's going to beat everything in Springfield, Missouri. So in this case, I'm going to look at a much more competitive market. Senior Living West Palm Beach, as you can see, all of the domain metrics for these websites are significant significantly higher than they are in Springfield, Missouri. There is, however, one that is on page one, towards the bottom of page one, and has a domain rating of two. I find that interesting. On the other hand, though, I see that they still have the colon home, which tells me that they're probably not working with an SEO agency. I, I, it would be very unusual for an SEO company to leave that, but, you know, let's take a look at it anyway. As well as the pages that are ranking very highly, you know, Brookdale's national company, so it doesn't surprise me to see that there. Uh, Watermark, you know, gonna take a look at each one of these five stars, also national, All right, and I'm just gonna leave it there now. We're now looking at the entities, the things that get talked about on each one of these pages. Uh, this doesn't look super well optimized, but the one thing that it is telling me is that Google's seeing assisted living, independent living, memory care, respite and short stay hospital, 
hospice care, so forth. These are all terms that are semantically related to the topic of senior living. A home page that has these or, or a landing page that has these in here is going to rank better in search. Now, in this case, uh, Brookdale used the, the word senior living, but I can tell you overall, Brookdale's SEO is a little weak. It has a strong backlink profile, but it's on page is, is leaves a lot to be desired. It's uh, the schema markup that they use is usually pretty rudimentary. Uh, going into the others, basically we're going through each one of these and we're trying to get an idea of what the subtopics are that we need to have covered on the landing pages for Google to determine that our content is richer and more comprehensive than anybody else. If we're writing an article for your blog, we're doing the same thing. We're also trying to determine what angle we should be approaching the topic from. Looking at the topic of commercial real estate investing, what am I seeing here? Well, once we get past the ads, it's how to get started, how to get started, things to know about it, which is a listicle format, you know, pay attention to that. Is Google showing guides or is it showing listicles? This is a platform where you can invest on online that's interesting and it's new. Again, how to get started, the pros and cons, how you can do it online and it's a listicle, how to get started essentially, how to get started and pretty much a definition. So what angle are we going to take? Mo most of the search results are how to get started, but there are others that talk about the pros and cons. There are some listicle formats. There's one that talks about how to do it online. These are some interesting angles that we can explore with the content. We really just need to pick one, take a look at the search results, what are they covering, and how can we do a better job of it? Which leads us to the next step, creating the brief. This is the template that we use for our briefs. We have things here, you can very clearly see we're trying to rank for the keyword, how much dermal fillers cost, title tag, meta description, the slug, uh, the head term that we're trying to target. And here we include some notes. The next step is to create this outline and this is typically going to get generated by looking at what is already ranking in the search results. So I'm taking this target keyword that we're trying to rank for and go over to Google and then we need to check the search results. We need to see like what are all of these topics? What are all of these articles talking about? We also want to keep an eye out for the people also ask results, which I'm not really seeing anything here. But if I did something that were just dermal fillers, for example, you know, we'll see like how long do they last? What is a dermal filler? What is the difference between Botox and dermal fillers, so forth and so on. And then we can even click on these and expand to get others. What can go wrong with dermal fillers? What happens when you stop getting dermal fillers? A lot of sub, there's a lot of subtopics that we can target with this. The goal not necessarily being to write the longest article, but to write the most information rich article. We're going through all these search results. We're putting together an outline that we're going to pass over to the writer. The writer is going to produce the content, then throw it into a few different NLP tools that we have. Once the content is written, we'll run it through a tool like this, which will allow us to compare it to some of the search results, some of the stuff that's already ranking on page one. It's going to give me information about the length of the articles that are already ranking, the headlines, how many paragraphs there are, the presence of different entities and how frequently they've been mentioned. And the goal isn't necessarily to get the highest score here, nor to include every single one of these keywords, but to notice what related entities are not present anywhere in the in the piece of content. For example, an entity such as nasolabial folds sounds like it should be included in an article about something like dermal fillers. Other entities such as lick augmentation should probably also be included in this article. I would also argue that one of our goals should be to figure out what nobody else has covered. So like in this case, one of the things that will go hand in hand with the cost of dermal fillers is how, how frequently do you need to get them? You know, is this something that you need to get done every month, every three months, every six months? All of that is going to play into the lifetime cost of getting fillers and could be something that could provide a unique angle that Google will recognize and as a result, rank our article more highly. Now, this is the same step that we take if we're doing, if we're writing a landing page. So if we were trying to rank for a keyword such as dermal fillers, Philadelphia, or dermal fillers mainline or dermal filler south philly that process looks the same it's just that we're going to be producing a landing page versus an article once we've completed the entire optimization with this tool it then gets passed over to out one of our developers who posts on the website uh, and then the seo will go in and add internal linking from existing content on the website be it other articles or if we're dealing with landing pages we'll most likely adding a link to it in a module that's getting passed across all the pages in other words if we have five botox pages all five of those Botox pages for 
Tampa, Clearwater, St. Petersburg, Wesley Chapel, wherever, all of them need to be internally linking to one another. And it's most easily accomplished by creating a module that will automatically ad update across all of these pages. Lastly, we want to go into Google Search Console, submit the page to get crawled by Google so that it can possibly put it in the index. And then over time, we need to make sure that we're monitoring whether it's getting indexed and whether it's getting traffic and so forth. So one of the things that we'll do is go over pages and monitor this right here. This crawled not indexed, discovered not indexed, means that Google knows it's there, but they haven't crawled it, or they knew it, they found it, they crawled it, and they decided not to put it into the index for whatever reason. We need to monitor this just to make sure that we're not spending hours putting up landing pages that are ending up in Google purgatory. Crawled not indexed, discovered not indexed is going to become only a bigger and bigger problem as the internet gets bigger, as people put out more low quality AI content. And we've got to make sure that we stay on top of this. Otherwise, all the work that's being done for your SEO is in vain. Once the page is indexed, we then need to monitor how it's performing in search. Each month, our team is monitoring pages such as this one to see how it's trending. Like in this case, I, I can see that this article it has been seeing a bit of a drop over the last couple months. So maybe we should revisit this thing to see what we can do to recover this this traffic that we were getting before. We'll usually do this across the entire website just to see you know what needs our attention. We've also built tools that will monitor for keywords where we are in positions four to ten for example, or maybe like 11 to 20, where often through minor tweaks to the content that's already been produced, we can achieve a jump and get it up three to five positions. We refer to these as striking distance keywords. So this is the life cycle. First, we need to identify how we're going to set up the architecture of your website. Second, we need to identify the keyword that we need to target with a given page. Then we need to go to the search engine results to see what's ranking, what can we learn from those results? Should we even be looking at the search engine results for a specific industry or location? Should we try to compare it against a more competitive market, as you saw I did in the case of West Palm Beach versus Springfield, Missouri. What needs to go onto the page? What are the entities that we need to optimize for? Is the page getting crawled and indexed by Google? Is there something that we need to do to get it moving along if Google's not indexing it? Once it's been indexed, is it ranking? Is it getting as much traffic as it possibly could? Is it trending downwards? Is there anything that we need to do? And then move on to the next keyword, the next thing that your customers are looking for. One, two,